Hey, how are you? This is Andrea with ADS and I have a special treat for you today. We just a couple of videos ago talked about organizing mini conferences. And so actually now this is quite timely because I just got to go to a proper conference with about 3000 ish people plus global in nature and everything, the Hope Global Forums. And so I wanted to a little bit compare contrast, visually show you the branding in the space, but also just chat with some people who are there. So in this video, you'll see a couple of interviews, chats with people, they're first timers, they're people like me who've been there for the first time. Uh, there's people who've been there since the beginning, the very first one of these conferences uh, over nine years ago, so they say. And so uh, there's so much here. Jack Dorsey, CEO, chairman, and co-founder of Square and Twitter uh, was here. He kind of wrapped up the whole conference. Uh, let's see who else. Janice Bryant Howard, first African-American billionaire owner of a company was there. And Deepak Chopra, whom I heard for the first time last summer and now he was here. Everyone says he was fantastic. I missed him. Uh, you know, but there's so much star power, TI, all kinds of people, Ambassador Young, all kinds of people showed up for this, of course. Why? Because clearly John Hope Bryan has a fantastic, amazing network of people. And you can see why in this video later. So hope you enjoy this. Um, there's some business lessons along the way. There's even a lady who interviewed me, <laughs> which is interesting, intriguing, very cool, very cool. So you'll get to check that out and hear a little bit behind the passion behind it, ADS. And uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy this video. From a branding perspective, check out the greeting signage. Love that up top. And also, every single column downstairs is wrapped in branding and messaging. Registration was on point. Very nicely done. Love it. Hey there, this is Andre with the ADS Agency, here to bring you the very best in marketing and branding tips, as well as business tips for those of you who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and personal branders. Welcome, and this is a special edition with the Hope Global Forum. So we're here live today, and what's so fun about this is that it's extremely massive. There's so many people here who are here for the first time. It's my first time. I've heard about it quite extensively from other friends and stuff before, um, but to be here is quite different. So there's a very eclectic mix of cultures, uh, people from all over the world who fly in here uh, just to be a part of this day. And the topics just range from everything from fintech to entrepreneurial um, and really all centered on economics as well. So how do we make economics better for the everyday person, uh, which is quite intriguing, right? So uh, we'll be chatting with a few first timers as well um, and probably some veterans. But uh, my quick takeaways, I think it's an awesome place to be. The people that you meet here are amazing, fantastic. They're in all kinds of different fields. Um, I've heard people say that it feels inspiring to be here and all that. And as you remember in our um, two videos back, we were chatting about mini conferences and how to organize mini conferences for your organization. Um, this is more of a a proper conference, you know, because there's about 3,000, I'd say 3,500 people here. Um, at least that's what their website says. <laughs> and it's, it feels absolutely massive. So I'll show you a couple of shots of that too. Um, so anyway, thanks for being here. And now I'm going to bring on someone that I think you would enjoy listening to um, in just one moment. This, by the way, is their social media lounge, fairly popular throughout the day beautiful lounge area. It's got photo op areas and also a Twitter board. Nice touches. Very well done. So now I'm here with Jay Hicks with Global Asset Development. He's a first timer uh, too. Yes, I am. I am a first timer. Yeah. And so um, tell me about your impressions of the Hope Global Forum so far. What do you oh, think? Tremendously positive. Tremendously positive. I just, everything that started out with with uh, Deep Tat Choka and, and listening to folks in the Treasury, listening to folks in, in banking, and all these folks having all these great ideas and on how they can make the world a better place. And it's just phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And so much so that I had to come back for a second day of it. So, second half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, yesterday was my first day too. Okay. And I came at like lunchtime, like basically lunchtime. Lunchtime? And I feel like I missed so much mm -hmm. in the morning. 
um, because everyone said Deepak was awesome. awesome. And awesome. I saw him last summer and some people that, you know, that Chase had a big entrepreneurial kind of event last summer and Deepak was there. Mm -hmm. um, and so people said he was awesome there and I thought he was awesome there, but the same people who went to that, who saw him here was like he was worlds like oh. worlds even better it's, it's i see him all the time on youtube and whatnot but this was having it live was just another level it was, it was like just understanding how to meditate how to get kind of divorce yourself from all these little things that are going around you and trying to lock in on what is important and mm -hmm. i think that's kind of what where, where i'm taking away from this whole thing is how do we lock on what's important everyone's got ideas everyone's got these things that they want to do but how do we put it back together to where everyone can benefit and i think that's that's where the, the work happens and that's what we need to be at. awesome yeah i love that um also janice bright howard was I think we say her name, Howard, uh, was here yesterday. I don't know if you got to hear her. Oh, actually, I got to meet her going out. Really? Oh, she was awesome. She was just uh, not only awesome up there, but she was awesome going out. Very nice lady. I mean, I met some of her subordinates. They're fine people. They want to do things. And that's, like I keep saying, everybody wants to do things. Let's find a way to get them to do it. You know? Yes. And now, did you hear about this um, commitment thing, the Hope Global Forum commitments that they are asking people to do? I saw it on Twitter. Okay. So I don't know if it's like up here on the screen. There's a Twitter screen I'll show you well, Andrea, in a little bit. I'm old bit. school. I don't really tweet a lot. <laughs> I mean, but I, I think I can get into it. Okay. Yeah. So um, apparently there's like commitments they're wanting everyone to make. Think about the commitment you'll make after leaving this conference to do your bit of good in the world in your own way, right? Uh, so I've seen that online and part of the things they talked about this conference is the number of commitments made um, awesome. because of the Hope Global Forum mm -hmm. and uh, so I've been a little bit thinking about that I don't I'm not ready to quite you know display what mine is just yet but uh, it seems interesting so well, look, we all have our talents so let's let's bring it together I mean let's Smart people don't do things because they're afraid of fail. So let's not, let's just be, let's just do it. You know? Let's do the dang thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, also, so this is Jay. Um, and, and Jay, tell them real quick what you do. Oh, um, Global Asset Development, we help businesses stop pitching. That's essentially what it is. See, you, there's a lot of times people want to go out and find money, find money, but typically if you have some type of receipt, some type of things going on with your business already established, you can convert equity into debt and get funding. So, in proper funding, two points over LIBOR, two years grace, seven year term. That's it. Good. Awesome. Holla at me. <laughs> Thegadgroup.com. That's where we're at. Thank you. Awesome. I'll link to that below. All right. Thanks, Thank Jay. Thank you. Okay, I told you about these column wraps before. Great, excellent branding. Think about incorporating that in your next events. Awesome. So I'm here with Laura Sims with Operation Hope. And so she works with small business owners and, and wanted to get her over here just to chat with you about what uh, people in her position do at Operation Hope for small business owners. Uh, first of all, the Hope Global Forum is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's my first time here. Okay. Um, I don't Mine know how many. Yours too. Yeah. yeah, so all first timers. Uh -huh. Dave, um, who just brought you over, he's the first timer. Right. Uh, so very cool. I think it's an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. I've heard nothing but rave reviews about it. Good. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you do with entrepreneurs, um, with Operation Hope, and how you're able to help them on their path. Okay, yes. Again, my name is Laura Sims, and I'm a financial well-being coach for Operation Hope. I handle credit and money management as well as small business. The main thing we do with small business is we have a 12-week entrepreneurship training program where we bring speakers in, we talk about business credit, we are actually going on a trip to Google next week. We um, have uh, conversations about access to capital, we talk about um, supplier diversity, we talk about um, all sorts of things, and at the end we do a shark tank and a graduation, so that's pretty exciting. I'm currently doing one in College Park, and my uh, it's been one of my biggest classes. We have like 35 people in the class. Wow. And so, yeah, and then after people go through the program, and they don't have to, we do something called technical assistance, where you can just come into my office, which I'm at a Hope Inside Sun Trust. We have, I, I know, I'm sure you know, we have Hope Inside different um, employment people as well, which is UPS and Delta and the police department, things like that. But I'm a Hope Inside Sun Trust, and so you're able to do one-on-one -on -one consultations if you just have a particular issue about 
about marketing, either I can help you or I can point you in the right direction. So, and all services, of course, are free because we are a nonprofit. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But how, how, so how can entrepreneurs get a part, you know, be a part of that program? Okay. If they want to get involved with the, the shark thing is like, a, a, how many long, how many weeks long is it? Okay. Well, the, it's called the entrepreneurial training program. It's 12 weeks. Okay. And at the end, on the 11th week, we, uh, my students put together a presentation for a shark tank. There's no money necessarily involved, but the judges are people who have access to capital. So mm. if they have any questions, if you're missing a component of your presentation, they'll invite you to think about a couple of things and to include it moving forward if you're ever looking for money. So it's a good exercise in understanding what you need to be able to articulate about your business. Love it. Mm -hmm. So a 12-week program. And then how do entrepreneurs apply? Do they apply? Um, yes, it is um, an, an application process. Uh, you contact and we have uh, three coaches in the uh, Georgia area. Um, you know, you just contact us through email or, um, you know, you go online, you find our names, you'll see who's the co coaches and you just reach out to us. And then we kind of give you an interview over the phone. Um, you, for my particular class, and all coaches are different, for my particular class, um, this is not a theory class. You don't tell me I want to start a business and you don't know what it is. Okay, <laughs> I need you to have done some research it doesn't have to be registered you don't even have to start it but I need to know that you have a well thought out idea mm -hmm. that you need to put in act, into action so that's that's and for the most part the other coaches but I think they might also allow people who are not sure what they want to do and things like that but for me no I need you to know what you want to do <laughs> Totally understand. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you're not all around the world, you know. Let me help you pick right. out your passion in life. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, yeah, we're past <laughs> the theory part. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And then otherwise, you know, outside of that 12-week program, can people just come into yes. a Hope Inside and ask for a coach Abs like you? Absolutely, they can come in. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Of course, everything is free, and um, I can almost guide you as if we were in class on a one-on-one -on -one session. Or again, if you have a particular issue like financial statements. I'm not necessarily well versed in that, but I do have a referral to give you who also works for free. So any kind of referrals that I give you, some are free, some are not because that's their business. Um, but I can definitely point you in the right direction of where you need to go. Nice. So you may or may not know this. I'm just asking because this, we just talked about this on our last video last week okay. um, about the SBA, uh -huh. Small Business Administration and SBDC, Small Business Development Center. Yeah, they came to speak to my class already. Paul Wilson. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So you have good connections there you all yes, play and together score. yes and score, score too yes awesome mm -hmm. I have a score mentor for my financial statements class mm -hmm. we just spoke last week I love it yeah. and Laura tell us where you're from I should have asked you oh, okay well together. originally I'm from New York uh, born and raised went to Hampton University oh, graduated a <laughs> uh, degree in marketing and um, have a plethora of companies in my background, including Black Enterprise, Ebony Man Magazine. Um, I'm a real estate agent, have been one for 15 years. Um, wow. You know, had my own business, and um, yeah. So you've been there, done that. So it's not, yes, a, it's definitely trades. not theory, <laughs> but it's definitely not right. theory, you know, so. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, very cool. Laura, it's been awesome chatting yes. with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, okay, thanks. Great. thanks. Quick break to hear a quick snippet from Tony Ressler, ATL Hawks owner, and listen to the two things that he feels is critical to create real business and what holds particular groups in America back in this area. Listen. Uh, most people would rather be asked for money than asking for money. And the truth is, in this country, the ability to have access to quality education yep. and access to quality capital, i.e. Like attractively priced capital, are the two keys to create real business. Yep. And uh, generally speaking, there are many parts of this country, many groups of folks in this country that haven't had access to either quality education or reasonably priced capital. Yep. And that's a, that's a problem. I cannot believe that. See, those are goals. <laughs> <laughs> can I interview you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you had anybody interview you? No, no one's interviewed me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me do that. Okay. You want to do that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Has but anyone ever interviewed you? Not on my show. <laughs> well, then I should do that. Okay. We can do okay? Yeah, cool we can just that? have a conversation. Yeah, we're just yes. having a conversation, so that's good. Okay. All right, we're ready. Let's go. Let's hit this. All right, so I'm here with Miss Judy Chapa. Find her on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, it's that Judy J. Chapa. Very hard to remember, I'm sure. And I'm here with Andrea. Yes. And we are at, where are we, Andrea? Hope's Global Forums. And she's actually reversed. She's now interviewing me. So I was interviewing people. She was like, I want to interview you. So Yes, she's <laughs> being indulgent with me because it's a passion. And that was my first career. And Andrea is a young entrepreneur who has, has a show on YouTube. And those of you, I'm sure, already know that. But so, Andrea, tell me, why did you get interested in doing YouTube? Yeah, so I actually just randomly fell into that. And so um, I was doing Facebook Live videos back when Facebook Live was a thing okay. and new. And uh, because I'm in marketing and branding, um, you know, anytime Facebook puts a lot of energy behind something, we have to know about it. So I said, well, I need to know about this for my clients. And then, you know, because there's oh, certain ones that sense. I want them to mm -hmm. do it. So, but I needed to know something about it myself before I went pushing them to do it. So I was doing Facebook Live once a month just to kind of try it out. Mm -hmm. And really getting on YouTube was a, a workaround hack. To uh, I read this thing how you could get closed captions by putting it on YouTube and ripping down an SRT file and sticking it back on Facebook. And so I was doing that really to get closed caption files. <laughs> okay, so you just said a lot. So, yes. for, the, so for someone who maybe has the same kind of ideas, um, someone who isn't in the millennial generation, say somebody that's a little, a little older, like in my age group. I'm barely, I'm, and yeah, <laughs> and trying to get onto the YouTube. Can you break it down to? Is it hard to do? Uh, is it user friendly, or does, should they contact outsource that? And if they have that concept idea, because actually I met someone here today uh, that is looking to start a YouTube. Oh wow. Show but they're intimidated by the entire process of how to make, technically make it happen. Yeah, yeah. So it actually doesn't have to be hard. I mean, right here we've got just my phone, camera phone. It's true. Um, there's a simple little mic, you know, that's up here and we're sharing that space and it just plugs right into my phone we don't even have our i didn't even bring any extra lighting or anything today we just That's happened true. yeah we could be over there with that fantastic light i'll show you in a minute but okay. um you know so camera phones have far and above you know they've just grown by leaps and bounds with their technology capabilities so now you know something like this is just a samsung galaxy s9 plus it's got an amazing picture you know for a camera phone so, um, so what's the advantage? You said you do branded marketing. Mm -hmm. That's Andrea, branded marketing. And so give me a, an example of good branding. Oh, gosh. Gosh. Well, where we are is great branding. Hope Global Forums, is, and that's one of the things I'm covering in this video is how amazing of a job they've done just branding this event space and the experience mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, so everything from the columns that they put up, um, you know, which are all informational slash great photo op areas. This backdrop area, which they call their social media lounge, is amazing and obviously, you know, a great part of a conference to include. Um, and just the way that they've put on this event, apparently for quite some time, you know, so. That's correct. I, I went to the first global forum back in 2010 and it has evolved and grown and here we are in 2019 uh, and obviously you have MSNBC who was li live streaming and so it has totally evolved and I do agree that I think that the messaging and the branding and the mass marketing, integrated marketing has really led and taken uh, Operation Hope and all of its subsidiaries into the globally because it totally has grown and spread not just in the United States but throughout the world. Yeah, it's amazing just to hear, you know, it's my my first year, but I think it's awesome. So what do you feel are some of the biggest mistakes that people make when they develop a marketing program? Oh gosh. Well, one is not knowing um, budgets, any idea of a budget, okay. you know, so they can go in thinking, 
I need help, I know I need help, and I want to look great, and I want to sound good, and polish me, and fix me, and, you know, um, you can do all that, but, you know, there needs to be some purpose behind it, and there needs to be a plan behind it, you know, otherwise you can just squander the little bit of dollars you might have, um, you know, and not use it effectively, and then what happens with that is people say, oh, that didn't work, I tried a social media girl, I tried a la-la-la person, and it you know, it was waste of money. And so if you don't want to waste money, you need to start with a strategy to begin with. So, you know, it's connecting those business goals, which a lot of people neglect that part too. You know, they're just kind of moving so fast and you know, especially the small business owners who are just starting out. Um, you're moving so fast, you got so much to do, you got cash flow to worry about and all that. And you haven't even thought about your business goals for the year yet. And so, that's what makes marketing and branding effective. If you can think of those business goals and tie in your marketing and branding strategy to that, then that makes it far more meaningful. You know, and then you can say, okay, let's be reasonable about our budget. What can we realistically, uh, you know, invest towards that effort, and then plan that out for the year. You know, so. So. As small businesses, um, and I've been, I'm a, I do consulting, um, Chapa Consulting, but I, re I recognize that a lot of small business, and I'm sure you've run into this, a lot of small businesses, a lot of startups may not have adequate budgets, and I think you're spot on when you say that needs to be a consideration. So do you ever do bartering or in-kind and like trade services, you know, something that they could do for you? And because that's what I end up doing many times, just on for the first time, and then you yeah. know, help them grow their business, then they get more money than they can, then they can do, they can pay <laughs> you, which is always, uh, you know, a, you, you do it at least one time, and then they get more successful, and then they help you be more successful. Yeah, have you? I'm sure you have to do the same thing. Yeah, it was a very that's a light secret. I try not to do that, but you know, for certain people, I have you know, done an arrangement like that. If it's something I truly need for my business or otherwise, um, just yesterday at this Hope Global Forum, uh, when Janice, I think it's Janice Bryant Howard was on stage with a yoga instructor, I can't remember her name right now, but it was a yoga instructor and the other lady who was um, helping the unbanked, she was saying, uh, and the yoga instructor was talking about how, um, you know, she was bartering that's right. For services. I that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, but how she was very strict about it, and she was saying, you know, it's it's currency for currency. You know, she's trying to think of her service as a currency, and likewise their service as a currency, and for that to be taken quite seriously, you know. And so, there is so much to that. Um, but yeah, I think we've all been there. It, you do have to draw the line, and I agree. Yeah. Um, but I think that you can also offer that for a, like I always say, it's a one-time offer, and that's it. <laughs> and then that's a good way to go. I haven't thought about no, that. <laughs> and there's no more after the one time. Uh, just to, I think it's also, especially with small businesses. Mm. Uh, but um, well, is there anything else you'd like to add about what you do? How did you know? You uh, have a great presence. You, Thank and you. So you do. You market yourself well, so I think that that of in itself speaks to your capabilities. But thank you. Tell me a little bit more about where you're from, and, and uh, yeah. maybe something about what how this passion of yours began. Oh gosh, we'll be here all day. Okay, well give me the, re <laughs> the, the super snippet. The yes. abbreviated version. Pretend Very abbreviated. Give me the Twitter version. Of the this. Twitter version. Ooh, that's even more succinct. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm from South Carolina, Florida, uh, and now my parents are in Alabama, so that's oh, where okay. I go home for holidays and things. And how this started, um, I was really a pre-med student forever. Oh, wow. And I know, it's just a completely opposite spectrum, it feels like, for a lot of people. And they're like, how did you get that transition? And it's because, you know, um, I got all the way up to the point of taking the MCAT and applying and blah, blah, blah. And uh, something hit me, you know, where I was like, is this really what you feel you were really made to do? Uh, and I think a lot of young people get caught in that trap. You know, you want to make your parents proud and you want to do something that's noble and it's going to make good money and all that kind of thing. And so it's easy to be like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. That's all, never going to be frowned upon choice. 
or a lawyer or an engineer, you know, those are all great, the wonderful, yes, high paying, high pressure careers. Yes, and um, you know, but actually being in the programs that prepare you for that uh, really showed me even back then, which is now uh, close to 20 years ago now, but. Even back then, um, being in those programs, I saw how healthcare was so different now. And yes. it felt like you had to treat people like a factory, you know, and I was just like, you know, this is not really what I thought. So um, lots of soul searching time. And I thought, well, the rest of the world is business. I'm gonna get an MBA, see if I can figure out what to do with myself. And that was my first formal introduction to marketing and branding okay. and marketing for nonprofits and you know small business marketing and all of that and large corporation marketing and I fell in love with that. I'm not, it's just opened up a whole other world. Like people do this for a living, and then all those little light bulbs started going off of little Andrea was good at <laughs> you know being quite creative, and people always pointed to her for this and this and this. You know, so once you know what it is, then it comes together. Well, I think what you're saying is, and I think I agree, because you have to follow your passion. You have to live for yourself. Your parents always want the very best for you, no matter what they say. And at the end, it is about living a purposeful life and doing what makes you happy, because you, you literally will end up doing what makes you happy, and you're doing it. Your work life, unfortunately, nowadays, will take up most of your life. So you want to enjoy what you do. And absolutely. apparently, I can see that you love what you do now. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank and you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a to, pleasure to be reversed. To, to, to turn the tables on you. <laughs> and uh, watch Andrew's show. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. You were great. <laughs> so were you. Thank you. That was fun. So that's the end of all the interviews. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't throw in this quick, quick snippet from Jack Dorsey, CEO and co-founder of both Square and Twitter. And in this little snippet, he, you'll see just a little insight into his thoughts, but also the uh, purpose and mission behind Square. And also a little snippet about his five mile walk he does, which I'll give a little feedback on it. Uh, in just a little bit, but um, I really wanted you to have a chance to hear Jack Dorsey and what he had to say here at the Hope Global Forums this year. So here you go. Absolutely. It's, it's about access. So it's, it, it goes back to that thing, like the one thing I want to improve in myself every single day is how do I identify problems, ask some questions about how to solve problems. <laughs>
the, you know, the, the simplest, although ridiculous path to do that for myself was to walk to work. And I live five miles away from the office. But I saw it as a benefit because I would wake up, I would do my meditation, I would have my coffee, I would check my phone, and then at 7 30 I just walk and some days I listen to nothing, some days um, I listen to podcasts, audiobooks, um, some days I take phone calls. But I have a, I, I, the other thing is I wear these running sandals that you saw me in. Running sandals? Yeah. Oh, so, running sandals? So they're running sandals, so they're the fastest footwear I found. So I, when I originally started walking to work, it was an hour and 45 minutes, and I got it down to an hour and 15 minutes by changing my outfit, by changing my shoes, and it's so predictable. So at 7.30, I get there exactly at the same time, every single time, and I know I have this amazing amount of space to think, um, to be creative, to, to learn, most importantly, from podcasts and audiobooks. Um, but it, it's, it, it, it's really, you know, find a lot of what uh, enables me to do what I do because it just takes so much. I know, I know I always have that place and I always know when I get in the office that I started the day with a win because I walked five miles, which is ridiculous and kind of stupid, but, but I learned. I exercised. I was in my community. I saw the city. I met people. And... <coughs> <laughs> and I did want to ask you one last question, of, uh, of, you know, because I think we're both in many ways disruptors, positive disruptors, and, and we both, I think, value this calm, quiet place inside of us that has to exist with all the noise. <laughs> I, I think you did that in your walk. I think you, you, in many ways, you're still walking. I mean, you're not walking to the work, but you, you have now adopted that in the way you flow through life. And I walk in life con consciously oblivious to most things around me because a lot of it's noise and it's, it, and it's not productive. And I want to focus my time and my energy on the thing that I want to invest in. You short circuit the whole hotel. You shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in saying thank you. Thank you. So Jack Dorsey mentioned something I thought was amazing. I thought you would like to see how he wrapped up the conference. Uh, but one of the things he talked about, which the audience was like, oh, what? They like totally, completely, the whole room gasped, is when he said he walks five miles to work every day. He specifically chooses to walk. Um, and he says he got it down to a science. He started wearing all black clothes in case he sweated a bit. He wore, you know, the best walking shoes, running shoes, whatever. Um, they're actually running sandals. And he now has five miles down to an hour and 15 minutes, which is a 15 minute mile walking, which I think is very nice. Um, I compare that to my own. I do a three minute, a 45 minute, three mile walk. Um, same pace, Jack, we have the same pace, so cool. So I totally understand the power of walking. I uh, talk a lot about that in my Scotland book, so you head over to my Scotland channel, you can hear more about that. I'll probably talk a lot more about that because it was very transformative. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe. If you're on iTunes, Google Play, listen to this on podcast. Do the same, and I'll see you next time. Mwah. Cheers. <laughs>